If you're into vinyl, this video is fundamental to your understanding of what and how it sounds. So there I was trying to make a recording and I ended up making a video which I, which I produced yesterday. And in the making of that video, I discovered something which I thought would be interesting to show you. So this is the spin-off. This is the one I was pointing at at the end of the video about the flip over cartridge in the Crosley. It's all about the RIAA curve. That sounds really boring, but I'll try and keep it very simple and show you why it's quite important and what it does. Here we go. Records are basically big plastic discs or in the old days shellac discs and they just cut a groove in them using a special tool with a blade that cuts and what they do is they shout down a horn and make the blade wiggle as it cuts the groove. Here we have an original photograph of a Native American doing exactly that, talking into the horn and making the needle cut the disc, or in this case a cylinder. What you have isn't exactly hi-fi, but it is recording the sound. But there's many things that make it sound bad or not very good, including the shape of the horn, the size of the cutter, and various other things. This is a good picture because you can see here that the needle makes that little piece of metal move and that makes that diaphragm move and that makes the sound go into the horn and the horn amplifies it so that you can hear it in the room. And this is the way they recorded music. They literally got the instruments and pointed a big horn at them and the balance was to try and get the right instruments in the right place so that they didn't overpower each other. As is often the way with these sort of things, they got better at it and with the advent of electronic recording, the ability to use microphones and to use electric motors effectively or electric cutters to cut the grooves, it actually became a lot more sophisticated and the sound quality improved dramatically. Because instead of shouting down a horn and making something wiggle, you actually spoke into a microphone and then drove a cutting blade, which did it very well. But they then discovered there was a bit of a problem. And that problem was that people liked him to listen to music on records, but they only played for about two and a half minutes. 78 RPM, screeching through the through the disc, and but the point is they didn't have very much room on the discs. So what they had to do then was they decided they would change the way they cut the discs, and this is where we get quite interesting. With various companies vying for the market, where we won't go into all that. Eventually, they ended up with micro grooves, which are very very thin grooves, and with the sound cutting into it, but it's bit of a problem. The bass is quite a big movement and the treble is very small. And if you look on here, these are grooves I actually use in my own microscope. You can see here what looks like bits of sugar in the middle. That is actually the treble and the slight waviness that you can see is the bass. We can look at a more extreme picture here where you can see the grooves and the stylus and you can see how it's cut. It's, I got this off this website. It's a really good website. So what they did then was they cut the grooves very much closer and because they reduced the base so that it was not full value they actually managed to get them closer still and they boosted the treble the high frequencies so that they were much bigger than the surface noise of the disc because obviously the needle scraping into any imperfections in the disc would give you noise so by making the noise you want i.e the treble louder than normal when you actually play it back, you can alter it down and get, make it the right level. And hopefully that's going to sound right. So that's what they did. And this is where we introduced the idea of the RIAA curve. Because there was no good just one company doing it. They all had to agree on it. Okay, so here we have ourselves a Audacity screen on here. We can see the mouse wiggling around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a file. And it's going to be this one. Now this is Patrick Patrickos and where we want to go. And you know that one because you've heard it before if you've listened to anything I've done on here. But I'm going to do that. Now, what I'd like you to see is that this is a proper digital recording and as such, it's full width between there and there. So it's plus one and minus one. So you know, it's 100% loud and 100% loud in the other direction on both channels. There is a very slight amount of red there and there and there and there and there and there and there. Now what that is is where that's just about P1 
peaking. And because this is a stereo recording, they, they don't exactly match top to bottom. So that one's got one there, and it's in a different position than the one above it. And then it hasn't got some of the others, and then it's got one there. So that's because there's two separate tracks. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say, right, okay, that's two separate tracks, and it's going to sound okay. So let me just try playing a bit of it back. I've now got on the headphones so that I don't contaminate the sound that you hear and so that I can actually hear what's going on. What I wanted to show you is this is the trace for Patrick Patrikos, where we want to go. And it's a nice full trace as we discussed before. However, if I want to compare that to a record output, a vinyl record output or a 78 record output, it's very large. Let's see what happens if we apply the RIAA curve to it. Let's have a look at what the RIAA curve is, first of all. And if I go on to uh, Effect, EQ and Filters, Graphic Equalizer, and that is the RIAA curve, which is for playback. And the reason it's for playback, it means that any signal that's been recorded, when you play back with that, will give you boost to the bass, and it will give you cut to the treble. If I hit flatten, we get that. So that's what an ideal playback would be. No, e no EQ, no treble or bass boosted, no middle boosted, just a flat response. And if I play that now, this is what you'll hear. And let's apply it first. Got to get it right. Hit apply, hit play, and Anyway, we know what that's like. So that's a good, very dynamic piece of music. From the dinky, 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 dinky sound to the dush. So, yeah, big difference. Okay, now, if I now apply the RIAA curve, let's see what happens. But I'm going to have to invert it. Because this is what we want to do, is we want to put onto here what would be on a record. So what they do on the record is the opposite of what they do on the playback. So let's go on to effect, go on to EQ, graphic equalizer, and bring down presets and hit factory presets, RIAA. So that's the RIAA curve, and that's giving plenty of boost to the bass and plenty of cut to the treble. So let's see what happens if we just apply that in its invert form, i.e. how they record it, to the signal we've already got. So we've got a nice signal there, that's about the middle, and then we've got the treble going up. So let's apply that to that waveform and see what happens to it. Oh dear, look at that. There's quite a lot of red there. Now, everywhere there's red, is where it's hitting plus dBs. Now, if you think about it, we've told it to make all the treble 20 dB higher, or 10 dB is 10 times, so it's 100 times higher. So that's gonna be the effect there. But also, we've lost all the middle bit. Where's all this, you know, all the body of it gone? Well, of course, that's the bass, and we've told that to be 100 times smaller on the really deep bass. So, that's the difference there. Let's see what it sounds like as it is. Oh, now that's a bit of, uh, it's a bit of a difference, isn't it? So, okay, where can we go from here then? Because that obviously isn't going to work, you know. And we, we could reverse it and get back to normal, but you know, would it? We've shot stuff off into into the stratosphere, so that's not going to work, is it? 
let's undo what we did so we undo the graphic and let's try if we know we've got a 20 db boost on the treble let's turn the signal down below. let's import recent files where we want to go right pull it down so we can see it and we want to RIAA it so let's turn it down effect this is the pure signal so we want to remove uh, so we want to take the amplification down so let's take it down by 10 dB then so that's minus 10 dB and apply that right that's given us that so there's no clipping or anything on there and now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the RIAA filter graphic equalizer there's the RIAA inverted filter so that's the way they record it and we'll apply that now this is what we were trying to get to before you see this I've still got things going here in the red oh no that's all right we'll go with that it's, it's not hugely a problem so okay let's play this back very hollow sounding where's the drum beat where's the drum beats gone okay so we've got a signal let's stop that there we've got a signal that is actually clipping a bit on some of the high frequencies so let's now apply the RIAA curve for playback because we've we've recorded that onto our disc we've now pulled it off and we want to play it back through the record player so we click on there and we apply I'll actually go and pull it down fresh well for factory presets RIAA click so that's the RIAA curve and what we'll do now is we'll apply that to there and we've now got what looks like the original signal but have you noticed something let's just play it back see what it sounds like yeah it's all there it's all there so that's fine but have you noticed how big that signal is because we can't make it any bigger we cannot make the re recovered signal any bigger other than by amplifying it because it's actually not going to fit within those lines if those lines are the maximum it can be that's how big it's got to be in order to be able to be boosted in the first place and then reduced so the signal to no the yeah signal to noise ratio but effectively the depth of signal the difference between the loudest sound and the quietest sound is that so it can't be any higher so we've only got so that's 100 yeah we've only got one two we've only got 30 percent a third of what we could have in a, in any direction for the simple reason that we're going to have to do the correction and that is one reason why vinyl records whatever you want to call them can never compete in terms of dynamics with cd because cd can have that entire signal as we saw before from the quietest to the loudest but records can only ever have that and that's the problem with them that's a good thing about them that's also the problem with them it means that the quietest 
the quietest bits will be whatever, but the loudest bits will only ever be that much, which is roughly a third of what CDs is, if you're looking at it on a linear vision. So that was, I thought was fairly interesting. If you've got anything out of this, then maybe you'd like to like and subscribe. If you've got, if you think I've done something wrong, then tell me in the comments. If you think I've done something right, tell me in the comments. If you're just pleased to be alive, tell me in the comments. You know, it's not a problem. And uh, anyway, I think that just about covers it. So, like, subscribe, catch you another time, and hopefully there'll be another interesting video up here coming soon.